My name is Alberto, I'm from uh, Italy, but I studied in the Netherlands. I'm a fourth year student of physiotherapy. I just finished my um, bachelor in physiotherapy and I'm completing my thesis. My name is Laurens, I'm a Dutch student studying in Denmark and at the moment I'm in my last semester, seventh semester, uh, working on my bachelor thesis. I'm Alex from Madrid, I'm a fourth year physiotherapy student and I'm nowadays doing my, my thesis in, in Spain. My name is JP, uh, I come from the Netherlands, it's my last year in physiotherapy and I'm doing my uh, thesis case study at this moment. Hi, nice to meet you. I am Cara, I'm a 23 year old student from Ghent University in Belgium and I'm currently in my first year of master's physiotherapy. Hello, my name is Jerome Kamerling. Um, I studied in, at the University of Applied Health Science in Bochum, Germany. Um, actually, I come from Luxembourg, but I did my studies here in Germany. My thesis is about a soccer player, which is having a groin pain. For my bachelor thesis, my subject was on hyperlaxity in the shoulder joints with people with uh, Allardandos syndrome. And my master thesis is uh, on the affinity of oxygen on hemoglobin in patients with chronic kidney disease. Oh, it's going to be boring. No problem. <laughs> okay. It's a thermographic characterization of the hamstring injury in football players in higher categories in, in Spain. So we are doing this characterization from thermography and echography. Uh, the title of this is a literature review which talks about osteogenesis imperfecta, kids from uh, 6 to 18 years old that has type 1 to type 4 osteogenesis and how exercise therapy are effective for these patients. Um, I chose to write about the task-oriented approach towards uh, treating children with uh, developmental coordination disorder. It was an observational study, so I looked at what uh, physiotherapists uh, do in strength training with the geriatric patients. I work uh, at a soccer club in my village uh, where I often see uh, hamstring injuries, uh, groin injuries. So for my case study I used um, uh, two populations, the hamstring injuries and the groin pain. Uh, I was lucky I was placed at the sports uh, clinic. Um, and most, the most common injuries are the hamstring and the groin pain injuries. So that's why I picked the subject. For the Bachelor thesis we had to start the first semester of our third year. It was like step by step doing a systematic review. And for the Master thesis as well we're also currently writing our systematic review about what's already known in the literature. And after that, like, so next year we're going to test patients as well. In my case, I'm doing a research project so that I can actually perform it next year in the master course. So this year I'm just doing the methodology and how I would do it actually next year. I'm in that thermography lab, so I think it makes sense to do the thesis in the same topic so that I can publish it and you know I'm interested in, in publishing, not in doing a thesis and then forget it, you know. I plan my process three weeks ahead starting my thesis. I try to uh, do a proper search for articles because in this topic specifically it's very narrow. So I really had to spend a lot of time in searching for good evidence articles that talk about my topic. So we just did a, a very broad search trying to find some uh, background uh, articles and through that and following up a lot of references we finally uh, managed to get an outline of uh, what treatments we would include. Together, together with my partner we have made a, a time schedule where we highlighted what parts uh, of the project we will be working on at what time. I thought this was a topic which I can handle in the given amount of time. I wrote it with one colleague of mine together. So we had to prepare an article approval and then get in contact with the institutions to have the possibility to recruit um, physiotherapists as well as patients we can observe uh, in the real world. <laughs> yeah, I started with studying the literature. I used yeah, Google Scholar and PubMed 
to find the literature. So I started with the mesh terms, of course, using the Pico question, which I learned from uh, Alberto. Uh, Matline, Sinal. And also some uh, um, online libraries for books, in uh, some specific books. And that's where I found the articles related to osteogenesis. Um, I only, I'm only using uh, reviews, because they have the highest level of evidence. We decided to also incorporate pilot projects. We went a little bit broader and then we just have to, in the discussion of course, have to relate to the quality of evidence. So we had a good uh, theoretical framework at the start. I planned uh, like one, two weeks to uh, finish the framework so that I uh, knew what to do when he entered my room. For the masters it will be patients from the hospital. It's actually kind of basic, the doctor causes when we have a patient that meets the inclusion criteria. My university told me that that has to be complex enough. I screened on other pathologies in the history. I'm trying to recruit more in case this case study fails or he just quits, it's, it's possible. We didn't achieve to uh, recruit enough patients or institutions because this was a so time-consuming process. We planned three months before we achieved to contact one institution. So we had to switch a bit our topic so that we also uh, made reliability analysis of our observational sheet. People who want to do this, they should really have in mind that this is a time-consuming process. Finding the right evidence. Timing, mostly, I think. Communication as well. For us, we have to write them like the master thesis with two people, with the bachelor thesis with four people. There are always like discussions now. We put it this way. No, we put it that way. Especially because we all have to like put it in English, but everyone's the same native language. Finding high evidence article, and also that they were part of my inclusion criteria. I think already now we can pretty much say that we're not gonna get a clear answer to our research question, mm -hmm. but we have some pretty good indications. Communication, communication, communication. <laughs> <laughs> They're just talking a lot and uh, putting a lot of uh, water with the wine. Uh, we've got a mentor who helps us pretty much in the methodology of the, of the project. And we are actually also trying to find some experts uh, to help us with the, with the next stage. I did have luckily the support of my supervisor. My tutor is always trying to help me, trying to give me some advices. I'm actually thankful. It's always good if people look at what you are writing and if they are understanding what you want to say. When you stand with people that are also writing things at the same time, you get good tips as well by confronting yourself and also you realize that you're not alone. I think it helps a lot having a, a clear time schedule um, between us and we know what we expect of each other. And we also remember at least once a day to hug each other. From my point of view, I really need to put all my life in airplane mode. And I do my work for four hours in a row, and then I take a break, and then I do four hours. That's the best for me. I'm not really a fan of being in the, in the same position for a very long time, so we try to find some places where you sometimes also can stand up or walk around a little bit, get some fresh air. Don't be afraid of taking breaks and don't think a lot of, oh, Actually, right now I'm doing nothing for the work because life isn't just about just work. You also <laughs> stay connected to other people or to your family and this gives you support. I think if you get a good theoretical framework, you need to be able to look critical at your way of yeah, doing things and find the right literature to defend yourself against the teachers afterwards. Because if you can tell the teachers what you did wrong and what you would, you would do different, that's also very strong, I think. I think uh, the most relevant is to have objectives, to actually fix them and put it uh, into term. The second point, I think it would be to develop a very really good relationship with, with your tutor. Um, ask what you don't know so that he can help you. It's really important to, to have this relationship well developed because if not, you are lost. Be critical, number one. So really question yourself and question also the article you're reading. So not taking everything for granted. Second, I think uh, understanding point by point what you need actually to complete the thesis. So having some structure 
And the third point will be listening. Because by talking and listening to other opinions, as well, you can get uh, a broader idea of how to actually work on your thesis. I always like to start with curiosity. I think being generally curious about, about a certain topic just makes that you want to write it more. I think it makes you a lot more ambitious. And that also makes the process uh, a whole lot more fun. And find some, find some good people to cooperate with. But also sometimes it can really be helpful, I think, to have some experts in the field that you are researching because they will give you some other insights that your supervisor can't give you. Select really relevant literature for your topic and that you write your introduction and your discussion, it should match. What is really important is also to have practical implications in the discussion for, for the field, for your colleagues out there. Afterwards, it makes no sense writing in such a way. So if you are trying to do a thesis, I would highly recommend to look for a topic you like because you are working a lot of hours in that topic. So really, read about the topic and be sure that this is what you want to do. And this way, it's gonna work. Thank you.